But when it's talking about Noah. When Noah, uh, when God is getting ready to give him the plan to what? Build an ark. It says that Noah, when the, when the world is just as wicked and God said, I'm going to judge the world. But the Bible says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. What does that mean? God just said, I'm going to judge the world. I'm going to judge the world. I am going to judge the world. But it says Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That meant that what God was getting ready to do to the world, though Noah wouldn't have to be taken out of the world, Noah could still live in the world and yet experience the grace of God and the judgment that the world would experience, Noah would not have to experience even though he lived in the world. And we were experiencing judgment in our world. But in the grace of God, the grace of God, grace of God is, is God giving you ideas, God giving you a plan, God giving you support, God giving you security, God keeping you in the realm where you can have peace. You can have peace if all the economic world is changing. You can have peace because God's favor is upon your life. Hallelujah. God will have people to do stuff for you that did not want to do anything for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's sort of like the little, little lady that was praying. And uh, the guy heard her, and you may have heard somebody say it before. Uh, you know, she was praying. She didn't have any bread. You know, Lord, send me some bread. And says, so uh, some fellow outside, or they heard her. And, you know, they're going to make fun out of her. She's down praying. Lord, send me some, you know, give me some bread. Lord, I need bread. So basically... Uh, he, they ran to the store and, and bought some bread. And the little old lady still praying and brought it back and threw it through the, the house. They said, here, you know, they call themselves being humorous. And the little old lady just kept praying and said, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this bread. Thank you for sending this bread, even though you sent it by the devil. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes we get all worked up. Listen. God, God's favor, God's favor, God's favor, God's favor, God's favor. God can move on folks that don't even believe in God. Hallelujah. So what I want you to think about is God's favor. If you really take it back to the, and I, I'm going to try to be uh, a little more condensed. But if you go to Genesis 6, 6, 6, 8, don't turn there. I'm just going to tell you just in your spare time, you can write a note. But if you go to Genesis 6, 8, where it talks about, and Noah found grace in the eyes of God. The word grace there in the Hebrew is hen. If you're taking notes, just write C-H-E-N, all right, C-H-E-N, all right? The Hebrew didn't have a K, so you write C-H-C-H-E-N, hen. But what it means, it doesn't just mean some things popping off. It literally means that God, which is a superior God, brother, God, which is a superior God, and being above everybody else in a high place, God who is superior will bend over. He doesn't ask you to come up where he's at. All right? God never tells you to come try to climb up there where he's at. God said, if you'll make yourself available, I will come where you are. I will come where you are. It is simply God bending over and getting act involved in a person's life in the earth and giving them ideas and ways and protection. So when it says that Noah found grace in the eyes of God, that means with all the crazy stuff going on in the world, all the mess going on in the world, God looked at Noah and, and, and God just bent over to Noah and grabbed hope. Noah and said, listen here, Noah, I'm going to bring judgment on the world, but I, I'm going I'm to have favor and grace upon you. I'm going to show you how to survive. I'm going to show you how to ride through this storm. I'm going to show you how to make it through this flood. I'm going to show you how to work something here and you're going to get through. That was good. Whenever you looked at that ark that was the grace of God now even though the ark represented Jesus Christ it was the grace of God that's why in Titus chapter 2 I believe it's verse 11 if it's not verse 11 to 13 between those two there is there he says the grace of God has appeared to all men the grace of God has appeared to all men. in other words God's activity for deliverance and salvation has appeared to all men because God desires to be saved and simply the grace of God is God's giving you what favor and protection and support you can just simply dump in all the stuff that happened you put it on the grace hallelujah so what god is telling paul listen man you don't have to be so concerned about the messenger but my grace is sufficient for you 
my grace is sufficient for you. In other words, the favor that I provide for you, man, if you really catch it, it'll be peace. Now, the word sufficiency simply means the ability to defend against danger all of life. My grace is, present tense. My grace is, present tense. My grace is, present tense. That means my favor, my support, my peace, my joy, all that comes. My, it's, all, it's always in the present tense for you. While you're facing what you're facing, the messenger and everything else, my grace is. Not my grace was, but my, you must always see grace as present tense in your life. So that whatever you're dealing with, grace is. Whatever you're dealing with now, grace is there. Hallelujah. And sufficiency means the ability to defend against danger all your life. That means all you ever have to go through in your life, if you recognize that God's grace is sufficient for you, that means whatever you face, whatever you know about now, whatever you have to face tomorrow, next week, next year, next 10 years, that God's grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So basically what, what, he, what God let him know is, is that the, the message is going to stay. But my grace is enough for you to defend against the danger he's trying to create in your life. Because, hey, he, he, he's messing in the physical world. But what he's really trying to do is mess up your mental world and cut you off from what I've called you to do. But he let him know, you don't have to worry about the messenger. Focus on my grace. It's sufficient for you. But a lot of times, let's be honest, we talk about the messenger more. What's going on? What we encounter? Blah, 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 blah. But it's the grace. It's the grace. I like that sound. Say it again. It's the grace. Yes, it's the grace. That's what God said. Hey, you know what? And he put it in a tense where he's saying, Paul, anytime you ever wonder about wh how you're going to make it through, it's going to be grace. That's all you got to look at is grace. Don't, don't, you know, don't be dialing me up for some new kind of stuff. Won't be any new stuff coming out. I mean, I, hey, this is it. This is up to date. This is up to date. This is modern for all time. In other words, don't become shopping. Be, be, see, put it in a tense. It's in a perfect tense in the Greek, which simply means is this. Whatever, if you check with me 20 years from now, this is what you're going to be receiving, brother. I mean, God is saying, I can give you something, and last, I don't have to substitute it, don't have to have to re renew it, anything else, because it won't run out. Yeah. Hallelujah. So it's sufficient. And what? His strength. All right, it's his strength, which is God's power in us reaching its goal, made perfect using our limitation and weakness. Now, we need to say something about that uh, right quick, because you got to be careful how you read here. It says, look at verse number 9. It says, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, you want to be very careful because God is a perfect God, is he not? So any strength that God has is strong enough. Any strength God has is not being made perfect. You got that? If it's God's strength, it's already perfect. So it's not like God's strength is being made perfect through you. 